Welcome to another installment of the Amsoil Information Series. I'm Rob Stenberg, and it's time, it's that time of the year to put the boats away. As you can tell, in this part of the country, we already have a little snow on the ground. So you want to make sure that those boats are put away so they're ready for springtime. So we decided to go on the road. We're going to talk to the experts at RJ Sport and Cycle in Hermantown, Minnesota, to get some tips on making sure that your boat is well taken care of during the winter months. Stan, how you doing today? Hi, hey, Rob. Thanks for allowing us to be here today. We really appreciate it. Stan from RJ Sport and Cycle. We're here today to get some great tips on winterizing our boat. Who do we need to talk to? We're going to go talk to Jeff, our service manager. He's been here for 30 years. He knows all about it. Let's go see what he's got to say. Sounds like he's the expert. Let's go. Sounds good. Jeff, how are you doing today? Hi, Rob. Hey, we appreciate you being here today. We hear you're the expert, so we want to talk to you about winterizing our outboard engines. So what is the very first thing I need to do to make sure that we winterize this correctly? Uh, you should do the fuel system first. Uh, add fuel stabilizer to your gas tank or add fuel stabilizer the last trip out. Uh, you need to run it long enough to get it into the whole motor. So that takes the longest. You want to get it through that system. You want to get it through the system. Well, amso has got a great product for that, so we can help folks with that. Fill your gas tank to keep moisture out over the winter. Uh, once you've done your fuel system, uh, and then you need the uh, next step would be to do the, the two oils. You could do the lower unit oil. The lower unit will have two screws. It'll have an oil level screw and an oil drain screw. You take them both out. The oil will drain out in a pan. Okay. You put your oil fill container in the bottom hole. If you have like a pump, you pump it in until it uh, fills it up and all the air will come out the top. Once you get oil out the top. You want to make sure that that lower unit is full of, of oil. You're getting rid of the moisture and you're getting rid of the old oil. And moisture is not a good thing, especially all winter. It doesn't want to sit in there, okay? And then replace your two drain screw washers. Uh, put your, um, tighten them up. Uh, your lower unit's full of oil. Okay, and then we move to the engine. The uh, four stroke like this one is, you would change engine oil and oil filter. Again, to get rid of any moisture and you're getting rid of old contaminated oil from the combustion motor. And you don't want that sitting in your engine all winter. You want to get that fresh stuff in there for protection. Yeah. You want to store it with fresh oil. Okay. The uh, two stroke, like the one next door, uh, you would do the lower unit. You don't have an engine oil. Right. Uh, so then you would uh, you would want to fog the motors. On it's, both it's, of them? It's called fogging. It's an aerosol product that yep. kind of comes out in a foam. Amsoil's got a great product for that. The two-stroke, being it doesn't have any engine oil, you would fog through the intake system so it coats the whole inside of the motor because right. there's no engine oil in there. Unlike the four-stroke, you could just uh, fog in the spark plug holes because you're really after the cylinders and piston rings because right. there's oil on the rest of the motor. Okay. Um, You'd want to grease any fittings. A lot of people forget to grease the fittings because there is to overlook, there, isn't it? Yeah, there is. There is water in the steering components and the tilt components and sure. And, and things we've just talked about are good yearly maintenance too, not only just for storage. Okay. Uh, the fuel stabilizer and, and uh, running the motor is probably the most important. But. Okay, so I've got, the, I've got the fuel stabilizer in there, lower units change, engine oils change, I've greased my points. What else do I need to do from this point? You would need to uh, drain your live wells, blow them out, add RV antifreeze, mm -hmm. uh, your batteries, you need to charge and unhook because there's memories in the boat that would, would drain the batteries over the winter and then they would freeze. Okay. Uh, your trailer, just kind of do a visual. If you see any uh, broken or damaged components or lights, uh, you, do, uh, you should repack wheel bearings because you can get water in there just like the motor. So you, bet. you can freeze and end up with rusty bearings next year. And, and when it freezes, it expands and whether it's in the engine and, yeah. or, yeah, not a good thing. Things break. Um, We've touched most of the main points that you need to do for, for storage. Um, you should probably look at your owner's manual because there may be sp specifics for your motor. But. Sure. So now we've gone through and we've done all this. Let me ask you one last question. What happens if I don't do this maintenance? What, what kind of problems could I have? Uh, the, the, the biggest problem we have is uh, ending up with old gas, contaminated, plugged up carburetors, not starting at the dock. Um, so you're sitting dead in the re water. Repair bills in the spring. Okay, we, we, we've got enough problems there. We want to help people avoid those. Hey, Jeff, thanks a lot. You Great bet. information. Thank Appreciate you. you being yep. here today. Thanks for coming. For another Amsoil Information Series, I'm Rob Stenberg. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.